Now let's turn to America, where on Tuesday, President Joe Biden announced that he would be running for re-election in the presidential election next year. This surprised nobody. Um, we even told you at The Spectator back in January on our cover that this was going to happen. And I think it's also fair to say that it hasn't really excited anybody as well. Um, I'm joined now by Grace Curley, who is host of The Grace Curley Show. Um, Grace, a lot of people are talking about this, but it's worth reflecting on. A majority of Democrats um, don't want Joe Biden to run. Um, A huge majority of young Democrats don't want um, Joe Biden to run. I think something like 76% of 18 to 34-year-olds don't think he should run. Um, And yet, here we are, we're approaching 2024, um, and he's going to run. Why? I think he's going to run. I was thinking about it over the weekend because almost the opposite reasons why Trump is running. So Trump has a lot of enthusiasm with voters. People really, um, they feel connected to Trump. They feel this loyalty to Trump. With Biden, it's the opposite. So I think with Biden, it's the establishment who's very happy with his performance. They like having somebody who's really just kind of a puppet who they can pull the strings You know, he's not going to fight back. He's not going to give them a hard time. He really doesn't know what's going on. And so they like having that person in there who they can boss around. Now, as you said, the enthusiasm from voters might not be there, but the establishment and and the swamp, really, as far as Democrats go, who are in charge, they don't care. They don't care if the voters, they know the voters will vote for him. I mean, that's the big difference here. There's a difference between lacking enthusiasm and people not actually going out and voting for you. And I just because Democrats aren't excited about him, I don't think they're they're going to uh, not vote for him. Can you be precise, uh, particularly for our uh, mostly British viewers, we think? Uh, What is the establishment in America? What is the swamp? Who are these people who have decided that Joe Biden? Is it not Joe Biden has decided that Joe Biden is going to run again? No, I think that there's a lot of, you know, power players in the Democrat Party, a lot of like Senator Chuck Schumer. And then you have these Congress people who have a lot of power on social media. I think they have a big sway in in what actually happens in D.C. And so that's what I mean when I say the establishment. I mean, people surrounding Joe Biden who are the decision makers, because I don't think he's a decision maker. And I think if and probably, you know what, probably there's a mix, too, of the media is involved as well, because I think if the media had wanted to and they had softened the soil a little bit going into this, they could have taken Joe Biden down with his scandals, but they covered for him. And so I think a combination of Joe's colleagues in D.C. and also the media kind of running cover for him have allowed him to seek another term as president. And what it leaves us with um, is a situation where the majority, I mean, Joe Biden and indeed Hillary Clinton did win a popular majority. Let's not get into the specifics of both of those elections. But uh, the majority of people who have voted Democrat in the past are left with a candidate um, who they don't like. Uh, I don't know if you know the comedian Bo Burnham, but he had a very good song called Joe Biden, where he sang, they're really going to make me vote for Joe Biden. That was back in 2020. Uh, It's going to be exactly the same thing in 2024. And uh, a lot of people, uh, I've done a piece about it myself this week, are thinking this speaks to some great dysfunction in American democracy that unpopular presidents just carry on. What do you think about that? Yeah, I guess it's just kind of sad. Like I was thinking about that as well. I mean, 2020, we had we're probably going to have the exact same matchup. And uh, it's it kind of shows it's it's very uninspiring, to put it mildly. And I understand why young voters are frustrated, too, because they're a lot of these young Democrats are very radical. They're very progressive. And there's plenty of people who are kind of climbing the ranks who have been dying to have the torch passed to them. But I think what there was a really good piece by Victor. I think it was Victor Davis Hanson in American Greatness. And he kind of wrote about how it's a good way when you have these older Democrats who a lot of younger people would consider boring and, you know, past their prime, not to, I don't want to Don Lemon myself. I just mean, you know, they're in their eighties. 
it's a nice way for Democrats to be able to put up this front that we're old school. Look at, you know, we still kind of are catering to the center, you know, middle of the road Democrat, even if they're not. So I think that that's a part of it, too, which the young people probably it frustrates them. But it is a smart play because as much as they want a younger person in there who's just going to tell it like it is and really tell the voters exactly what they want to hear, you're better off with a Joe Biden who can at least pretend to be this old grandfather, you know, who's working across the aisle and used to get a beer with people who are conservatives and la, 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 la. That kind of cover for Democrats actually works in their favor. An interesting element is Joe Biden's vice president, who is, of course, Kamala Harris, who, as everybody probably knows by now, is even less popular than Joe Biden uh, and has widely seemed to be a fairly inept veep. Uh, there is some speculation that Biden could drop her um, and pick a more um, exciting or uh, successful or inspiring candidate for 2024. Um, which might uh, address some of the concerns about his second term, because if, if, uh, if he's going to be 86 by the time he finishes his second term, if uh, his health fades even more, you may get a situation where the vice president has to step up and become the president. So who he chooses if he drops Kamala Harris uh, will become very, very important. Do you think it's possible or likely that he will drop Kamala Harris? And who might he choose? No, I don't think it's possible. I never thought it was possible, even even when the rumbling started. I just don't think there's any way that you can do that without really upsetting. Like a lot of those voters we just talked about, they, they might not be excited about Kamala Harris. They might not love her, but they love getting mad about things. They love being offended. They love, you know, outrage. And um, giving Kamala Harris the boot would definitely cause a lot of... Um, frustration and anger. And I've, I've read things before about people saying like, oh, you know, he could just, he could pick another black woman to come in. There's, you know, cause th there's so many, um, and, and I'm not denying that, that there's plenty of candidates, but that to me seems really um, like he's just using people at that point. If you're just taking one person and swapping them out for another, and you think that uh, these black women are interchangeable, that to me seems like a really dangerous road to go down. And if I were Kamala Harris or any of her fans, she might not have a lot of fans, but I would be offended. I, I would I would take that as a huge insult. So I don't think he's going to go near that. I think he's just going to, they're going to play the same, the same thing they did in 2020. It worked. So why mess with the good thing, I guess. You said that you think uh, the Republican nominee, who the person who Joe Biden will probably face next year, is probably going to be Donald Trump. Uh, we've talked before on Spectator TV, we've covered it quite a lot in the magazine uh, about Governor Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida. Um, obviously, Trump has this very significant lead in the polls. Quite how much we can read into the polls at this early stage is a matter of debate. Um, do you think Ron DeSantis' chances are being underrated at the moment or overrated? I think underrated. I, I think the fact that he hasn't even officially thrown his hat in the ring yet. He hasn't really given us his 100% attempt at this. I wouldn't count him out. I think we still have a long way to go. I mean, people forget in 2016, before those debates, it, the, the landscape, the field was totally different. Nobody had Donald Trump on their bingo card. So a lot can change when you start to see these candidates interact and America gets a, a real look at who they're, who they're potentially picking. Um, I think that there is this rush from Republicans to just choose and have it done with. And, you know, it's it's Trump and there's no other way to go. But I kind of think we're doing ourselves a disservice. And I'm honest, I'm a conservative. So if anyone out there, I'm fully Republican. So I, I just think that we're, um, we're eliminating our options very early. And I don't think that's a smart strategic move. Uh, DeSantis' sort of ace card, if you like, would be Trump fatigue, um, that a lot of voters uh, are fed up of all the drama about Trump. They, they, they may like him, they may even love him, but they may think uh, we've been beaten uh, three times in a row, arguably nationwide, in the midterms in 2018, in the presidential in 2020, in the midterms again in 2022. Um, and 
it makes more sense to move on. Do you have Trump fatigue, Grace Curley? And do you think your the audience of your show has Trump fatigue? The audience of my show definitely does not have Trump fatigue. Um, I go through waves of it, you know, especially over the last couple of months where you have things like you have the raid at Mar-a-Lago, you have the Trump indictment. I mean, you have these moments where your Trump fatigue gets overwhelmed by your sense of outrage about what's happening to him. So then you kind of go back into feeling like this guy's getting screwed. I'm rooting for him. And so I've kind of fluctuated between the two. Between the two, my audience has not. My audience is, most, for the most part, very much Team Trump. Um, but yeah, I think this is what we keep hearing from a lot of people is DeSantis could be Trump without all the baggage. Now, what then I hear, if you bring that up from Trump Republicans is, well, you're so naive if you don't think they're going to go after DeSantis in the same way they've gone after Donald Trump. And what I always respond to that is, I am not stupid. I know they're going to go after DeSantis. They've already tried multiple times with these crazy stories about him. What I think it comes down to is who can handle that better and who can kind of not get distracted by that as much. And that's where I think DeSantis's appeal lies is that he has an ability to not get too sucked in to a lot of these small fights and small arguments. Yes. Well, one uh, potentially very big fight is on the issue of abortion. Um, because of Donald Trump and because of the justices he put on the Supreme Court, uh, last summer we had the Dobbs decision, which overturned Roe v. Wade uh, and the legal right to a, the federal right to an abortion in America. And yet since that's happened, uh, abortion has sort of flipped as an issue and become a big, big winner or a bigger winner than it was uh, for the Democrats um, in a way that is, alarms Republican strategists because you're seeing a lot of progressive women and young people going out and voting in ways they didn't before for the Democrats because they want to stop the Republican-led challenge to abortion. Ron DeSantis recently signed a six-week bill, uh, sorry, banning a ban on abortions after six weeks in Florida. And Trump has been strangely muted on abortion of late. And in fact, in I think his latest statement on it, he said this is rightly a state's issue. Um, how is that going to play out on the Republican side? It almost reminds, what Trump is doing with DeSantis kind of reminds me of what a lot of Republicans, oh, I'm sorry, a lot of Democrats do with Donald Trump, where they get so focused on the person that their policies change based off what he does. And so if he reverses course, then Democrats tend to want to do the opposite of whatever he's doing. I think DeSantis is kind of having that effect on Trump where he wants to be against DeSantis. So he's changing a lot of the things that he's been saying over the last couple of years. Um, this this issue, though, is so tricky. And I, I saw today that Nikki Haley said that, you know, the country needs to come to a consensus on abortion and, and she thinks she knows how to do it. And. I just don't understand how that happens. Like, I, I don't, I don't see how, because I've been seeing Democrats and Republicans saying, well, you know, if, if these candidates could just kind of move to the center and change their stances a little bit, then they might win over voters. And that's fine if you're a candidate who really doesn't believe what you're saying. And there are people who feel in the middle about abortion. I'm kind of one of those people. I don't tend to have a super strong opinion. But if you are a, a Republican who has a strong belief that abortion is killing an unborn human, then how do you move to the middle on that? Like, how do you how do you convince someone to kind of just abandon that for the sake of, you know, widening the tent? And I'm not trying to sound holier than now. I'm just saying I, I don't I don't see how we can come to a consensus on something that for a lot of people in this country is black and white one way or the other. If uh, Donald Trump does win the nomination, uh, do you think he will has a better chance of beating Joe Biden than Ron DeSantis would? No, no, I, I don't. Um, I, I think... If I were really to guess, I would say Ron DeSantis probably has a better chance of beating Joe Biden because there's a lot of people who um, I I guess it's I don't think the left will be able to kind of gin up the same 
hatred for Ron DeSantis in the short amount of time as they did for Donald Trump. That to me feels like lightning in a bottle, that kind of Trump derangement syndrome is going to be hard to duplicate with somebody else. And it's going to be hard for the media to tell people, oh, this guy's actually worse than Donald Trump. You thought Trump was bad. We told you Trump was a dictator. But this new guy who seems to be a family man and he's pretty low key and he doesn't go on Twitter a lot, he's actually worse than Trump. I just think there's a lot of people in the center who aren't going to buy that. And so I think that the combination of that and the fact that DeSantis is a lot younger and he could really showcase that on the debate stage against Joe Biden, I think that's that's a win in his column. I think the polls so far as to who would win in a matchup, DeSantis Biden or Trump Biden, are quite mixed at the moment. Um, but probably the reason why Trump might have more of an advantage is that he has always been able to drive out low propensity voters. Um, and because of his name recognition, because of the people that a lot of people, the fact that a lot of people who don't normally vote do vote for him. And I suppose there is doubts about whether DeSantis would be able to do that. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's valid. And, and I think that this is why you have to have a primary and you have to kind of keep an open mind. Like I keep trying to remind people there's nothing wrong with wanting to see people actually debate things in a primary and decide who you like after watching all of the candidates. And for example, I like Ron DeSantis. I have no idea if he could handle questions on foreign policy. I mean, there's a whole there's a whole section of things that he hasn't really had to tackle as the governor of Florida. So that would be good to that'd be good to know. It'd be good to know where he stands on a lot of these issues. And it would be good to hear him respond to a lot of these criticisms from Donald Trump and, you know, voice whether or not they're even valid to begin with. But that whole process, I'm noticing Americans have a lot less patience for now. People people don't seem to want that at all. So they've already kind of chosen their sides in a lot of these cases. Grace, I think we'll end it there. But uh, I should say, um, because our viewers probably won't be able to spot it, but you are eight months pregnant. So uh, the next time you come on Spectator TV, uh, you will have a baby. Uh, I, well, I don't know. We may have you on sooner. Who knows? Uh, but uh, all the best with everything and very nice to see you.